on all. I've got about. Hey! Good girl, darling. A good lurcher at work, legally, is a joy to watch. The other side of the coin is this gangs of poachers illegally killing wildlife, trashing crops, and threatening farmers and keepers with violence. Jim Barrington, animal welfare consultant to the Countryside Alliance, is visiting Essex keeper Jeff Garrett to find out about the problems he's having with hair poaching. We call it the Rural Wrongs Project. It's, it's quite simple. It's to find out what the effect of the Hunting Act has been and how attitudes of landowners and farmers have changed to the hare, the fox and the deer. Yeah, when, when I first came here, um, the hare population was, was very small. Um, uh, you know, literally, you'd see the odd one. Um, and on arriving here as part of my job, um, predator control was one of the biggest parts. And over the years, the hare population did increase. But with, with an increased hare population, um, the biggest problem that we had was hare poaching. We were getting you know, inundated with people coming on here chasing hares, coursing hares, illegal coursing. The effect on the hares was devastating because our population plummeted because people were coming out here daytime, nighttime. Um, if it's at night, they had lamps. They were chasing the hares with the dogs, also with the vehicles. And it was nothing to come out in the morning and see a dozen hares laying on the side of the field as a little calling card. You know, and they devastated the hare population. So as you can see here, you know, this is part of our line of defences now. We've had to build gates across gateways. Um, we've had to dig ditches um, to stop vehicles just coming down the road and just driving straight off the road. Because, you know, there's it's nothing worse than You've got hair out here, you've got valuable crops in the field, um, and you get a, a souped up four wheel drive vehicle charging across the field, doing donuts, trying to keep the hair in the field so the dog can chase it, and then off they go, you know, just not a care in the world, disappeared, left off with all the, the damage that's here. Ed Coles is another keeper who's suffered at the hands of poaching gangs who are quick to turn violent when challenged. They'll think nothing of ramming your vehicle, uh, firing catapults and ball bearings at you. It's bad enough dealing, of, dealing with them during the day, but when you're at night and you don't know where they are and, you know, it can, can be a, a, a little bit hair-raising sometimes. We've had people assaulted with bats and bars. They've used vehicles to ram people off the road. You can kind of deal without that kind of thing, you know. Like life's hard as it is, you know, working, working in the countryside without the, without the threat of getting rammed or catapulted. Um, yeah. Things got so bad that Ed set up a petition calling for a change in the law. After having several weeks of constant coursing, uh, one of the other local gamekeepers. Um, had a vehicle related to coursing come into his yard, ram his dog kennels and, and try and steal his dogs. Um, and that was, that was the key thing for me which prompted me to start the petition. Because I, I kind of think it's a little bit unforgivable. It's like trying to steal one of your children, you know, if, you, if, uh, if you're trying to steal someone's dogs. And how they have the nerve to do anything like that, I, yeah, it, it disgusted me and that, that, that was the final push where I thought I've, I've got to at least to try and do something. So after being angry, I spent 20 minutes on the government's uh, petition website. Yeah, and six months later, we'd got 13 and a half thousand signatures, two responses from the government and at least some kind of commitment that something was going to happen. What happened was the government promised to crack down on hair poaching in its police, crime, sentencing and courts bill. Trespassing to chase hares with dogs is already illegal, of course, but a change in the law would mean bigger penalties, new offences and greater powers for the courts. The bill includes controversial measures on things like protests and hate crimes, and it's bouncing back and forth between the Lords and the Commons at the moment. If and when it becomes law, will that make a difference? I think it is going to help. It might take a year, a year or two for it to fully come to fruition. 
but hopefully, you know, we won't. We'll have we'll have less violent reports, if you know what I mean. There'll be there'll be more of a reason for them to get out of the way a bit sharpish and and clear off. Essentially, that's what we're hoping, anyway. So, what does Jim Barrington make of what he's seen? You realise that the countryside isn't like a Disney film. It's not simple. It's not cheap. Uh, and it's people like that who are dealing with the realities of wildlife management and indeed animal welfare, rather than sometimes the rather simplistic view that's put over by people who uh, would like to feel more comfortable about leaving everything to nature. Uh, and in fact, it's, it's people like Jeff who are the real conservationists. <laughs>